Today on Radio KD8 TTE, we're going to talk about sending alerts and other information by radio. We're going to see some of the kinds of technologies that are in use when you hear some of those transmissions by tuning around and listening on the radio. Before we get into that, though, subscribe to the channel. Make sure that you don't miss any of our videos on radio messaging and emergency communication. Stick around. The Amateur Radio Service is a powerful communication tool, as we recently demonstrated in the Black Swan 20 communications exercise. How can emergency managers, organizational leaders, and individual members of the public be alerted when there's critical information that they need to preserve life and property? Let's consider the services that exist today, how they're being used, and then we'll take a look again at the role that amateur radio can play in making our communities more resilient. Most of us are already familiar with the emergency alert system. This is what you see when TV and radio programming is interrupted for transmission of critical messages like severe weather, amber alerts, and of course the periodic test. The transmission begins with three data bursts with information about the alert, the attention signal, the message, and the end of message burst. This system is effective, allowing for rapid distribution of messages, but it works only one way, and it works only for people who happen to be tuned into radio or TV at the time of the transmission. How can messages be sent to people who aren't tuned into radio or TV at the time of transmission? Well, one of the options is the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, Weather All Hazards Radio. NOAA Weather All Hazards Radio Station KIG 86, Columbus, Ohio. Broadcasting on a frequency of 162.55 MHz and serving central Ohio, including Columbus and vicinity. A broadcast service that runs on VHF at around 162 MHz this radio network provides not only weather information, but alerts on other hazards, including threats to public safety. Those data bursts that you hear at the beginning of those emergency alert system transmissions are also on the NOAA Weather All Hazards radio transmissions. That allows for a weather radio to be configured so that it will play the sound, the alert, only when it is relevant the NOAA Weather All Hazards radio broadcast can be received by many other radios, including the amateur handy talkies, the radios for other services like General Mobile Radio Service, GMRS, the Family Radio Service, FRS, and Citizens Band, CB. Coverage is excellent throughout most of the United States. Thanks to the ability to have the radio play alerts only of particular interest, those weather radios being left on all the time is not going to cause undue disturbance. The downside, of course, is that you still need to be near the radio to hear it. That doesn't mean that there's no way to get an alert if you don't happen to be near a weather radio or radio or TV, thanks to the wireless emergency alert. Like the emergency alert system on radio and TV, the wireless emergency alert has a short message that interrupts whatever's happening. Delivery in this case happens to be by mobile phone. These messages are broadcast from mobile phone towers to enabled devices in the areas targeted for messaging. Because they don't rely on the carrier's network capacity for messaging, even in network overload, these short messages can get through as long as the phone has good enough signal to receive the alerts. The Emergency Alert System, NOAA Weather All Hazards Radio, and the Wireless Emergency Alert are all different pathways for getting a message distributed. The Interoperable Public Alert and Warning System, IPAWS, is a platform for message authentication and routing to the pathways needed to get the message out over many channels at once. In Radio KD8 TTE episode 28, we talked about IPAWS and the testing of a message from the IPAWS platform at the federal government down to individual county stations in Ohio using only radio so that the system would work even if internet service is interrupted or lost at any point along the way. This radio-only IPAWS message relay was performed for the first time ever in October 2020 as part of the Ohio Military Reserve's Black Swan 20 exercise. 
Auxiliary communications operators received the iPaws message at a government station at Columbiana County Emergency Management Agency. The messages were then originated for relay and delivery through amateur circuits and brought to a scheduled radio net where representatives from the 10 districts of Ohio's Amateur Radio Emergency Service received their copies of the messages and further relayed them. Our participation proved this concept quite nicely. An attractive feature of this message relay and delivery method is that it provides a means for two-way messaging. The recipient can reply to the sender unlike traditional broadcast methods. Here's a link to episode 28 where this concept and performance during the exercise is discussed in more detail. This is something that radio amateurs need to spend some time thinking about. Our service is distinct from other methods, making it a better option for some tasks and inappropriate for other tasks. Another information sharing pathway that you might know about is WWV, the HF or shortwave station run by the National Institute for Standards and Technology, NIST. Most listeners know it for transmitting accurate time information and that atomic timekeeping products like watches and wall clocks use its low frequency sibling WWVB for staying in sync. If you listen long enough, however, you'll discover that in addition to accurate time broadcasting, there is also a place for voice information broadcast. These have been used for various purposes over the course of more than 100 years of operation of the station. At the time of making this video, minute 10 of the hour is dedicated to information about a military auxiliary radio service, Mars, exercise being undertaken. This is how WWV sounded at station KD8TTE on 5 MHz at 710 AM local time on October 25, 2020. Your attention, please. The Military Auxiliary Radio System Organization, or MARS, will provide announcements on Minute 10 of the WWV broadcast and Minute 50 of the WWVH broadcast. These announcements will provide information to participants regarding the purpose, date, time, and location of the exercise. Announcements will air two weeks prior to and during each exercise. Please go to www.dodmars.org for more information. Episode 11 hours, 11 minutes, coordinated universal time. In summary, getting alert messages to a lot of people is complicated. In the United States, we've got several systems all being developed to improve interoperability to get critical information to the people who need it to preserve life and property in times of emergency. To learn more, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the new information that we're presenting. Check the playlist to see what we've already covered. Like and share this video if you found it to be helpful. Use the comment section below to add your thoughts and to ask questions. Until next time, this is Radio KD8TTE, out.